to church, favor fam. Favor watching online. Come on, get up on your feet and we will praise God today. Come on. Come on, put your hands up. What a beautiful day that you have made. I will praise you. What a glorious day that you have made. I will praise you.
to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. And today I believe it. I'm so excited for you to encounter God today. And if you're watching online, we are so glad that you are tuning in with us today in our service. And hey, my name is Belle if you haven't met yet. And I'm a part of a team here at Favor. And we're going to continue to worship in a little while. But during this, you know, in, in this kind of service, in this time of service, we ask people to come forward because, you know, we can pray for them. But, you know, we, we can do that right now because it's so difficult to hear your prayer because we're wearing mask and shield. But, you know, um, we're, but we're going to give you an opportunity right now if whether you're watching online or in your or, or you in here in the room just to go to live that favor that church and we have an amazing people in our prayer team that are waiting and willing to chat for you and pray for you you just have to click the request um, live prayer button on that side and also if you want to send your prayer uh, later this week you can email at us at fa a prayer at favor that church and we love to pray for you and stand with you in prayer and during actually this week We've received many prayer requests and the prayer team has been praying for these people and today we get to stand with them in prayer too. And I'm going to read out some of the requests we've gotten. One message as um, pray for the restoration of relationship in my family. Someone else message praying for provision for our house that we are building for our family and that God will guide our relationships. And the next one is pray for God that will heal me completely with whatever is torturing me mentally and for the societal tendencies that I have. You know, we're going to pray for them in a minute, but also people send in some testimony and I want to share one of them with you. And he said, I've been watching Favorite Church online since the start of PCQ last March. And imagine the almost a year that we're in a quarantine. Just wanted to thank this community for helping me renew my relationship with Jesus. It has helped me a lot with my anxiety and depression. Wish this pandemic would be over soon so me and my family can actually attend the church physically. Wow, God is so good. And you know, when I was scrolling, all the prayer and I saw that they need prayer for healing for restoration of the family for finances and it also reminded me that actually today in kids online kids church online we're also learning about prayer and our kids are learning that they can talk to God in any way about anything anytime anywhere and we're actually do that right now so church can we uh, can you pray for me and can you stand with me in this prayer father God we pray for the unity in this person's family, God. We know that you are the one that can fix. You are the one that can restore how messy we are, God, or how broken we are, Father. And also, Lord, we pray this person that needs financial provision for the building that they need for the house, God. Not just financially, Lord, but Lord, open doors of opportunities, Lord. Bring right people in their circle, God. So whatever this person needs, Father, provide it in the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we also pray for healing for mental issues and suicidal tendencies. We believe, Lord, mental illness is living right now, God. For any thoughts that's not helping them, Lord, be gone in Jesus' name. From the top of your head, from the sole of your foot, be healed in Jesus' name. And the rest of us, come on, if you have needs, I want you to raise up your hands to heaven. God, you know that this person needs, Father, before we even ask it to you, Lord. Lord, do what only you can do in our lives. We trust you, Lord, because you are faithful, God. So, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives, God. We give you all the glory. Come on, church. Let's worship him.
the goodness of the Lord. How confident has seasons change your faithfulness brings.
Thank you, Lord. Now I love this song that we've been singing tonight. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. You know, we believe in a God that's not just written about in a book, but a God that is to be experienced, encountered, to encounter his love, his presence, his healing, his provision, his breakthrough. It's not just a God you learn about in school, but it's a God that you every day come to his feet, come to his throne room as he gives us things every day. Every day the Lord blesses me with air in my lungs, blesses me with food on my table, blesses me with relationships in my life every day. But I love that we're singing this prophetically over our house, Favor Church. There's a house of miracles. And I believe, I'm a big believer that if you get under the anointing and the blessing of a house, a church, the blessing and the anointing that's on the church comes upon your house. And today, this whole day, we've been singing this song, and I've been claiming this prophetically, not just from my house, favorite church, but from my house, the Aiton residence in Pasig, Metro Manila, Philippines. I'm claiming that my house is gonna be a house of miracles. And in this room tonight, I know there's people that are sick. And watching online right now, I know there's people with illness in your body. Well, this is a house of miracles. This is a house where God can come and can heal and restore those that are struggling with finances, finances on the, on the fritz. God can come and provide in a moment. Relationships breaking down. We have a God who is a restorer right now. So if you, come on, if you got sickness in your body, lift your hands all over this place. If you're watching online, lift your hands. If you need a financial breakthrough, lift your hands. If you need a relationship restored, come on, lift your hands. Right now, God, we thank you that you are a miracle working God. There is no sickness that is too great for our God. And we declare right now in the name of Jesus that you would come and that you would heal cancers in Jesus' name blood diseases and disorders, diabetes, to be healed in the name of Jesus. God, those with broken bones, God, torn muscles, whatever it is, COVID, anyone infected with COVID would be healed instantly. Let that virus go in Jesus' name. Bring financial provision right now. Restore relationships, God. Whatever the need is, we believe in a miracle working God. This is a house of miracles because this is a house that glorifies God, that lifts up the name of Jesus above every name, above every sickness, above every disease. The name of Jesus is more powerful. So come on, if you need a miracle, not just in the room tonight, but you need a miracle for your family, for your business, for your relationship, whatever it is, lift your hands from the front to the back. Declare it, prophesy, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come on, sing it out. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is the house of miracles. We bring everything. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything. Favorite church, we see miracles happen all the time. 
But it doesn't just have to happen in this house. It can happen in your house. This week I've been, I've been a little bit under the weather, a bit sick this week. And I, I had all the symptoms of COVID uh, without COVID. Uh, just newsflash, there's still other viruses in the world, everybody. <laughs> so, you know, I had a couple of tests and wasted a bunch of money. And, uh, but every night, every night I was feeling a little bit unwell and I pray with my daughters every night. And every night I just said, hey, daddy's not feeling too well. Can, can you please just pray? Pray over me. Make them, they lay hands on me. They pray, dear Lord Jesus. And they both pray like, Cece starts praying for me that God would heal me, then starts praying against COVID virus, and then starts praying for a dog, all in the same prayer. And uh, it's cute, but, you know, I, I'm determined that my kids will grow up in a house where miracles are normal. And I'm not talking about our house here at Favor, because this is our house, Don't, and this is your house too. I'm talking about the Aiton house. You know, faith, faith doesn't need uh, maturity. It just needs the humility of someone that believes in God. And it doesn't matter how old. And I want to encourage you, take, take the, the anointing that's on the house and put it on your house. A house of miracles. Come on, be, believe for breakthroughs. You're struggling financially? Just close the checkbook, turn off your banking app, and just begin to pray for a moment. Don't let prayer be your last line of defense. Let it be your first line of attack in whatever you're coming against. It's a house of mirror. I love that song. I, I think that song's gonna, that's the first time we've sung it in our church, and I think it's gonna be an anthem in our church of just, and, and, and I believe people are gonna get healed just as we sing that, and there's gonna be breakthrough, and amen. Amen? Hey, if we've never met before, my name's James. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're into building or if you're watching online, thank you for joining uh, with us. And I know that God's gonna continue to really move and speak to you. If you're in the building, why don't you grab your seats? You can turn to the person next to you, just yell at them. Just yell something, because they probably ain't gonna understand you anyway. But it's great that you're here. I've had a great day today. Uh, in a moment, uh, Paul Carolino, our young adults pastor, is going to come up and preach. Uh, he's got a great word. Just a couple of hours ago, I just snuck. I snuck over to our friends at Victory Ortigas, uh, who, who today are transitioning into a new senior pastor, and I got to hang out with them. And, and I'm actually, I'm just so inspired. I, I love that church. I, I used to attend it when I was eight years old, and then again when I was 17. And just to see the amount of incredible leaders, they're, they're, they're raising up a new senior pastor because they're sending their current senior pastor to Panama to start a new church. And, and I'm like, Lord, never call me to Panama, ever. <laughs> uh, true story, in the middle of the sermon, he was next to me, I won't say his name. He's a good friend though and his phone started ringing and it wasn't on silent and it was Ricky Martin living the Viva Loca. And he said, it's because I'm learning Spanish going to Panama. I said, there's a few other songs that you could learn Spanish. Anyway, I'm just, I'm feeling inspired. We, you know, we love those guys and, and just what God's done in this nation through them. And, and uh, Pastor Noel is taking on Victory Ortigas and just cool, just a great unity in Ortigas. You know, once a month, I catch up with all the pastors in Ortigas. We all have breakfast with each other and, and, uh, and laugh and tell stories and uh, joke about the churches without the Holy Spirit. And um, no, no, it's okay, they're there. They joke about it too. It's all just a big joke. And uh, uh, I just love the unity uh, that we have in our city. Isn't it cool? And I, I tell you, Manila, we need, we need strong churches that love each other, that don't fight with each other and compete with each other. And so I'm, I'm humbled to be a part of a great crew here in Ortigas. Uh, you know, one of the things that we love to do in our house and that we believe in is uh, giving God our tithes and our offerings. Tithe is the 
that's God's anyway, that we just, you know, give back to him and the offerings are over and above. And in our church, we really believe that this should not be manipulated or, or you shouldn't feel compelled to do this, but it should be a conviction that you have between you and God. So we try to make it as easy as possible for you to give. There's uh, so many different ways. All the details are on the screen. If you're watching online, they're there. Uh, I wanna encourage you that uh, if you give with cash, if you're here in the building tonight, you can give out. We've got it in our foyer, in our lobby. Uh, uh, we've got a, a giving station that you can give cash. But let me encourage you, if you have the ability to give online, but you have cash, please give online. We would prefer it. Uh, moving to online has been so good. Uh, it's safer, it's cleaner. There's a paper trail straight away, and it, it's safer for you and for us. And we actually wanna encourage everyone post-COVID as well, once this virus finally goes, just to try and continue to give online to uh, just because it's easier for you and it's easier for us. If you need any help with how to do that or learn how to do that, please come and see us in the giving station and we'll, we'll help you with that. Cool? Hey, why don't we pray? If you've given in the last month or this week or maybe you're giving today, can you just put your hand on your heart just as we all pray together? Lord, I thank you that you've blessed us, God. Lord, I thank you that uh, every good thing we have has come from you. And God, the money that we've given in the last month or this week or today, God, I pray that you would bless it, you would multiply it, that we would see thousands more people impacted by the gospel of Jesus because of the generosity of our church. Uh, do miracles with that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for giving. Thank you for your generosity. And uh, I'm so glad that you uh, partner with us uh, as a church. You know, uh, we've got so many uh, new people constantly every week coming and hanging out with us and checking out our church for the very first time, both here in person and online as well. We just really want to welcome you, make you feel uh, so at home here. Uh, standing around the auditorium tonight, uh, we got people from our VIP team in their hands. They've got a favorite church gift bag. And if this is your first time tonight, we wanna get this bag into your hands. Uh, we've got some goodies and treats in there for you. But more importantly, we've got information on our church, why we do what we do, and how you can find out a little bit more about getting involved in our church. And so tonight, if you, if you are here for the first time or you brought someone, as our team begins to roll through the aisles, could you just stick up your hand and grab their attention because we wanna get these bags into your hands. So come on guys, can you just lift up your hands? We wanna get these bags into your hands. And church, come on, can we really welcome them? Make them feel at home tonight. Great to have you here. We got hands going up. I love the friends. I love the friends because they're, they're like this. They're like this. Come on, one more time. Can we welcome everybody? Great to have so many people with us for the first time tonight. Now listen to me. If you grab one of those bags at the end of the service, up in the back corners of our building, we've got a VIP sections up there. And we've got a gift. We've got a favorite church umbrella we'd love to give you. But please come up the back. Show us the back, say, hey, it's my first time. And we wanna connect with you and give you that present. If you're watching online for the first time, please let us know, fill in that box on Facebook or on YouTube or Kumu, just write and, and let us know. If you're on Kumu, why don't you throw some diamonds at us as well? Give, give us some y y Yoshi Yoshimoto gold or whatever it is. Uh, just throw something that way anyway. Uh, hey, we got amazing things happening in our church uh, in the next couple of weeks, and we're about to go to Favor News. But I really want to thank everybody in this season for being so gracious to us as a church. You know, the majority of our services or meetings that we do now, we're actually trying to make them hybrid meetings, which means that we have both physical people and online as well. So you're going to see in just a moment, uh, we're, we've got our first men's breakfast for the year coming up this Saturday. So we've got limited spots uh, actually in, in the, the building. And then we've got online as well. We're going to do it. But I just want to thank you. You know, it's all new for us. We've never done this before as a church. And it's all brand new. And so we're working it out. And so I want to thank you guys just for being so patient with us, so kind and gracious to us. And I mean, if you really had a problem, just, you know, just, Watch another church on YouTube. I don't care. Do what you want. But, uh, <laughs> but I really want to thank you for being so gracious to us as we do it. And so if you're a man, if you're a man, come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you grunt. If you're a man, is there any men here? 
See, this is why we're having a men's breakfast to just, I know online you couldn't hear that, but we need a men's breakfast just to teach everyone how to be a man again after 12 months of COVID. Uh, as well, if you love Jesus, but you've never been baptized, we're about to baptize people. We're doing it through our connect groups. And so if you wanna just tune in to the news and when they put up the information, you can grab that info, but we'd love to baptize you. Hey, Paul's about to come up and preach. It's gonna be a great word. Why don't we check out this week's edition of Favor News. Hey, what's up, Favor fam? Welcome to another edition of Favor News. We've got a lot of exciting things happening this week in our church, starting off with Favor Bible Study. This is our deeper dive into God's Word. And if you're hungry for more of God's Word, then join us every Saturday at 10 a.m. live on Facebook and on YouTube. We're currently going through the Book of Acts, talking about the early church and how it applies to us today. But if you missed our previous episodes, you can always catch up watching it on demand on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Pauline and I'm a graduate of Favor College. I remember I was overseas when we first announced Favor College and some of my friends texted and called me saying that maybe I should go. Back then, I was serving every single Sunday and leading a connect, and, but I knew that I wasn't seeing the full picture. So I actually interned in creative, so I did learn basic video editing and graphics and copywriting, and so I will never even think that I can do that, but right now I'm even QAing the entire favor movement content that we're releasing, so that's really helpful for me. I also interned in fraud, and so I did learn some lights and sounds. Then I realized that I, if I just invested my time, then I can actually learn something. So I think that I get to see leadership right at the front seat. So I feel like I was treated like a staff and I get unfiltered access to our senior pastors and our executive pastors. If you're interested in going to Favor College, I'd say go for it. It's an incredible training, not only to increase your Bible knowledge, but also to grow your character and your leadership capacity. It's gonna be awesome. Hey, how many of you loved our Sela Sessions Volume 1? It's our take on stripped down worship with spontaneous moments. Listen to this during your morning devotions or while you're commuting or driving to work. It's a great way to start your day and also to unwind at the end of your day. Sela Sessions Volume 2 is out right now on YouTube and on Spotify via Favorite Church Podcast. As a church, we believe in water baptism, which symbolizes our new life as followers of Christ. Throughout the month of March, we're gonna be doing water baptisms within our connect groups. So if you haven't been baptized yet, then we encourage you to sign up. And if you're not a part of a connect group, then we wanna get you connected. To learn more about this and everything that the Bible says about baptism, head over to favor.church slash baptisms. Hey, calling all men. March 6th at 8 a.m., we have our men's breakfast. This will be a time where we have breakfast and hang out with all the men in our church. Our gathering will be hybrid, both online and physical, so make sure you RSVP because we only have limited slots available. This costs $250, but if you're a college student or a high school student, it'll be $150. RSVP right now at favor.church slash men's breakfast. See you there. Aside from this service, we've got services for kids, high school students, and one with Filipino sign language interpretation. If you wanna know where or when you can catch all of these, or if you wanna join a connect group or find out everything we're doing as a church in this season, then head over to our website, favor.church, or follow us on our social media channels right over here. And that is it for Favor News. All right, good evening, church. Check one, two. Good evening, church, can you hear me? Can you hear me all right? Am I good? 
Hey, I'm Paul, and so nice to have you here. Uh, can you look at the person next to you and tell them you made it? Just a very touching way you made it. Just a little something about myself before we begin. Anyone here love jogging? Jogging, running, anyone here love that? Raise your hands if that's you. I hate jogging. Hate it with a passion. Coach Joy right there uh, told me you, sh- you can't hate jogging. That's my excuse for being lazy. But I hate jogging. I hate all kinds of running. And here's why. I think it's unbiblical. <laughs> like, fill in the blanks. Jesus blanked on water. Jesus walked on water, right? In our Christian life, it's called our walk with God. So just a little something. But I, I, do, I do some cardio. I do skipping rope, right? My, my record is uh, 10, 10 jumps, 10 jumps per week. That's it. I'm done. But not related to what I'm about to preach. But again, look at the person next to you and ask them, why are you here? Why are you here? I don't know why you're here, but I know that you're here because God has a purpose for you. It's not an accident that you're here. It's not an accident that you somehow turned up to church. Maybe someone manipulated you into going to our physical service and told you, oh, we're going to have lunch in a hotel. We're going to have dinner after, and now you're here. So I'm going to, today, I want to preach about purpose. And before I begin, there's a culture in our church that we call leaning in. So what, what's leaning in? Leaning in is responding to what God is doing. And so when you, when you lean back, it's like you doing this. But you, when you lean in, you move a little bit forward to receive from God. And how, what does that look like in a, in a preaching setting? It's you saying amen. It's you clapping if, you're, if you don't want to say amen. It's you making some noise. Because here's what I believe. That when you say amen, that word actually means let it be. And so when you hear something that you like, that you want to claim for your life, for your family, for whatever that you are doing, you're saying, God, let that be in my life. So tonight, I want you to maybe clap a little bit louder, maybe say amen a little bit louder if you want to receive from God. If not, I'm cool with that. But if you want to receive from God, can you say amen? Amen. Can you just respond a little bit louder? Because here's what I believe. If we can clap in games, if we can clap and shout, in concerts, we can clap and shout for the one true living God. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Our God is worthy, but today I want to preach about purpose. I believe that God has a purpose for you and that if we choose God's purpose for our lives, we will change the lives of other people. But if we choose otherwise, I think we're going to waste our life. And earlier in the 9 a.m. service, I did a bit of a skit and said, oh, someone texted me. Wait a minute. And this thing is the very thing that's going to cause you to miss out on your purpose. But I thought it's lame. I can't act. Kevin can act. I can't act. (laughs) Because I'm authentic. No, I'm joking. But, But this thing is the very thing that can be a tool to direct you to your purpose. But it can, it can also be a trap to derail you from your purpose. I was talking to Jay earlier, and I borrowed his phone and checked his uh, web history for accountability. Joke lang. But, but Jay's phone, uh, I looked at his screen time, and the screen time said that he spends around six hours a day on his phone. Anyone spend a little bit higher than that, a little bit more time than that, six hours a day? Seven hours, can you give me a wave if you're looking at your screen time now? But six hours a day, that feels like nothing. But if you compute and if you calculate, I'm quite good at math, and six hours is 25% of 24. Six over 24 is 0.25. So six hours a day, thank you very much. That's grade three math for you. But six over 24, 25%. If Jay lives up to 60 years old, which we hope he lives a little bit longer, but 60 years old, it's good enough. If Jay lives up to 60 years old, that's a fair, that's a fair computation for him. 60 years old, six hours a day, that's going to be 15 years of his life. And statistics say, you know, you sound professional when you mention statistics say that, that Filipinos, on average, we spend around 9.5 hours 
a day in our phones. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on my deathbed, hopefully 80 years from now. I'm going to be 100, 100, then some different. But I don't want to be on my deathbed and look back in my life and see that I wasted around 20 to 30 years of my life staring at a screen. I don't want to have that regret. And so just a little throwaway because that phone, it can cost you to miss out on your purpose. But let's go to the, the Word of God. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. I'm reading from the CSB version. It's not Benilde, but it's CSB. It's Christian Standard Bible. It says here, you are the light of the world. He's talking to you. You are the light of the world. You who think you're disqualified, you who think you're not, you're not good enough. Jesus says that if you have him inside of you, you are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. You have a purpose. God has a purpose for you, and that purpose, it's not for you. It's for everyone around you. It's for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So that's the passage that we're going to study today. I'm just going to break this down to pieces. I have six points. It's quite a lot, but I'm just going to go through it. I have six points. But I love how the first verse says in Matthew 5 verse 14, it says there, you are the light of the world. Those first two words, you are, they're quite powerful because what comes next after that can either make you or it can break you. And we have a great leader, one of the great leaders in our, in our church, uh, who has such a sweet spirit. She, she's, a, she's a she, a female, and she, if you know her, she walks like this, just smiling, like that, quiet, very sweet spirited, and waves hi to you. Very sweet, very sweet, very quiet. But you know, with um, these quiet people, they're like snipers, right? They don't say much. But when they say something, it can shoot you dead. All right, so this girl, right, walking, just saying, right? One time, we were having a leaders gathering, and they were taking a, a selfie, all social distance, a selfie. And this girl, smiling, looked at another guy, another leader, and said, you're ugly. <laughs> like, why would you, how did, it even, how did that even happen? Just from observation, what, what, did God reveal that to you, that he's ugly? Just out of nowhere, she said, hey, you're ugly. I would in a, seat, in a sweet way, and the guy, of course, was like, what? I'm sorry? Did I do something wrong? And then she goes, you know, she tries to win him back. Like, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not what I meant, but your face in the photo, you're ugly. Like, what the... Now, if I'm that guy, am I supposed to say thank you now? Like, thank you for the clarification, right? But I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna name names in this stage, but the girl's name starts with R, and it's, it ends with uh, Oksan Yu, and so, and he, and she, and she won. She won the SEA Games years ago, um, and she won a bronze medal in backstroke, but I'm not gonna name names. Unfortunately, today, she wore her Sea Games jacket, and so people <laughs> looked at her, was that you? And I'm like, and she said, uh, you're ugly. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But as an encouraging leader, here's what I did, right? As an encouraging leader, I want to bring a good report into that situation. I want to look for the good in that situation. I said to the guy, come on, you can respond to her. Yes, you can respond to her, say, I'm ugly, but God is greater. I'm ugly, but God is bigger. No, no, it doesn't say that. But those two words, it can either make you or break you. You are. But unfortunately, what happens is a lot of times we let ourselves be defined by what the world says to us. We let ourselves, we let our purpose be defined by who, what people say about us, by what we do. That's why on Instagram, that's what you put on your bio, hashtag entrepreneur, hashtag baller. Hashtag all that, hashtag Jeremiah 29, 11, national Instagram bio verse, right? And we let ourselves be defined by what we do, by who we are, by how we look. Now, the problem with that 
is the moment we see someone doing better than us in what we do, the moment we see someone who has a better looking house, who has a better looking face maybe, who has a better looking uh, spouse, we start comparing ourselves and we start getting insecure. And we start thinking, maybe I'm not good enough. My first point is this. And if you want to press on, that's the title, by the way, which I totally forgot. The title is press on. The title of this message is press on. Because every time you press on your cell phone, I really believe that you have either have a chance to choose your purpose or you, have to, or you can choose to choose your preference. And if you want to choose your purpose, that's not a one-time thing that you flick the switch and everything's good. When you choose your purpose, what you're going to do is you're going to press on it every single day. But my first point, if I want to circle back right now, my first point is this. If you want to press on towards your purpose, you've got to choose what he says. You've got to choose what God says. When the world tries to define you, when the world tries to throw things at you, when you see everything on social media, all your friends getting the things that you want to get, all the other people that you look up to getting the things that you're praying for, that you want, when, you, when the world's pressuring you that at this point of, of your life, at this stage, you should be maybe married, you should have a business, you should have a house, you should be at this stage in your career. When the world tries to define you, you got to choose what God says about you. Even when the world says you're not good enough, even when the world says um, you're not going anywhere, when the world says that you are not worth of anything, choose to, say, choose to listen to what God says. Because I don't know what you're going through, but our God says that even if you think you don't have value, our God says you are His prized possession. You're a child of God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. That guy whom rock stole, sorry, whom that gar girl who starts with R said that you're ugly. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, CJ Pataksil. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're a child of God. You're His Christ possession. You don't need to look to the right or to the left. If you're listening to this and there's some insecurity in your life, you got to be secure in who you are and listen to what God has to say about you. Choose what He says every single day. Every day you wake up, you can either look at your phone and start scrolling through social media and let yourself, anyone here has ever gotten filled by scrolling through social media? No one. Oh, wow, Mayron. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, about to say no one, but there's one person who got filled through scrolling through social media. But I think that a lot of times we think that when we're tired and we want to take a break, we can look at our phones and take a bit of rest. But there would be very, very few times that you would actually get rest when you look at your phone. And I would say those few times are when you watch Favorite Church, when you listen to Sela sessions, when you open Favorite Church worship playlist, when you listen to our leadership podcast, shout out, Roll It Go, and if you um, grow, go to you version, <laughs> Those are quite a few times. But uh, the, the lie that this phone brings us is that if we just keep scrolling, if we just keep on um, doing what th this thing is programmed to do, we're going to get rested. We're going to get filled, but it's not true at all. It's quite draining, if I'm honest. Right? It's quite draining sometimes. And add, add the toughness of life to that thing, right? Life's not easy. Life's not easy. If you're a parent right here in the middle of a pandemic, you know life's not easy. Can I hear an amen? If you're a, if you're a student at college, high school, or maybe a college or high school student, and you're doing online school, and if you're watching, you're an elementary or high school student, you're doing high, online school, it's tough. It's not easy. I don't know what you're doing, but it's not easy to live our lives. And that's why we got to stay connected. That's my second point. We got to stay connected to God. If you want to press on towards your purpose, you got to stay connected to God. I don't know about you, but have you ever experienced someone approach you and say, no offense? You know when they say no offense, they're about to say something offensive, <laughs> right? When they say no offense, it's going to be offensive, right? And, and you're like, you're having a great day. I don't know if this, if this happened to you. You're having a great day and someone approached you and said, no offense, but uh, you look a bit stressed, right? I'm like, no offense, but you're mean, right? No, no offense, but, but, 
but now I'm stressed, right? But a lot of times we get tired, and that's just the reality of life. Just like how our phones has battery, just like how our phones run out of battery, and when it runs out of battery, it goes maybe to down to 20, 10 percent. Anyone here? Wait till you're really low on battery before you charge, and then you run towards the charger. Sometimes we treat life like that. We wait till we're drained. We wait till we're sluggish. We wait till we're at the end of our ropes before we come to God. But we can't, we can't do life on our own. We can't do this life that God has entrusted to us on our own. The verse says, you are the light of the world, but that's only possible because in John 8, verse 12, Jesus spoke to them again, and he said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. If you want to have the light of life, you got to stay connected to the source. You got to stay connected to God. And I don't know what you're going through, but maybe, just maybe, if you would wake up tomorrow and the first thing that you will do is not look at your email, not look at your messenger, not look at social media, but maybe you can just press on to his presence because God is waiting for you. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you hope. He wants to give you joy. But that will only happen if you stay connected to the source. If you stay connected to the light of the world whose name is Jesus, that will only happen if you choose to press on to his purpose for you. You know, our purpose is to know God. As human beings, our purpose is to know God, to make him famous. That's our purpose. The, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 that God has put eternity into man's heart. The only thing that can fill you up is a human being. And it's not any human being. His name is Jesus Christ. So if you're here and you don't have Jesus Christ, we're going to deal with that in just a moment. But maybe you're a Christian and you're listening to this online or you're here in the room and you feel a bit tired, you feel a bit weary. Maybe we forgot that we got to stay connected if we need, if you want to feel rested in the presence of God. That's what the Word of God says. And I love how the, that verse, Matthew 5 verse 14, is, follows uh, the last sentence there says, a city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. Because here's what we believe. If you follow God, if you're going to give your life to God, if you will surrender to him, if you will pursue his purpose, the favor of God will follow you. And we're not talking about uh, just financial favor. We're talking about the favor of the presence of God. And sometimes that comes with peace. Sometimes it comes with joy. A lot of times it comes with purpose. But that will only happen if you would follow God. But the verse says that you'll be like a city set on a hill, which means that when you follow God, when you choose to press on, people will start seeing how God is moving in your life. Do you want that? Do you want that? Thank you for the 20 people who want that in their life. But Matthew 5 verse 15 says here, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Now we're being compared to a lamp. Because remember, we're not the source. We've got to stay connected to a source. And the lamp that they're talking about here is an oil lamp in the old days. And an oil lamp has oil, right? Wow, amazing. An oil lamp has oil, and that oil allows the, the fire to be sustained. Which simply means, that, means this, that... Your purpose, the, the very thing that God wants you to do, it comes with a price. And the price is that oil. You know, in the old times, oil before didn't come from Landmark or SM. Oil before came from things being crushed. And so your purpose, it will come with a price. That's my second point. Your purpose, it will come with a price. Third point, sorry. But your purpose, it will come with a price. And that price is you pressing on when it's hard. That price is you pressing on when nothing's going your way. That price is you pressing on when things in your life are not going the way that you plan it to be. Your purpose, it comes with a price. The problem is we, all of us here, we want the product. We want the peaceful life. We want the purposeful, impactful life. We want a life filled with joy. We want a strong marriage. We want a strong business. We want a great career. We want the product, but oftentimes we don't want the process. 
But a lot of times the process comes with a very high price. Right? And as Filipinos, we don't like high prices. Right? We like to what? We like to make tawad. Right? We like to haggle. You have an auntie, I have an auntie who is the best at making tawad. Making tawad, that's so con. <laughs> I have an auntie, right? We were in the supermarket, which, by the way, if you're running low on your self-esteem and your self-confidence, just go to a market. They'll call you. If a guy will call you, Pogi, Pogi, and you're like, oh, man, I feel good right now. Everyone's finding me Pogi in this place. But my auntie, man, he, she, one time we were in a market in Pangasinan, and uh, there's a lady selling suman. Ma'am, sir, suman, suman, 100 lang po. And my auntie, straight up, no intro, said, 40 na lang. 40? He's selling it, she's selling it for 100. Why would you even say 40? And she's like, and she tries to build it up. 40 na lang, bili ako lima. What? 40 na lang, 40, and I'm gonna buy five? Like, as if, as if they're gonna get money from that? And we, we, wanna, ha- we wanna haggle, we wanna, we wanna make that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we, wanna, we, wanna, we wanna lowball the price as Filipinos, but a lot of times in our life, with the lifestyle that we want, with the results that we want, we want to lowball it. We want that life, we want those results, but we're not willing to pay the price. And I, I'm guilty of that. I look at some other people's lives and I look, wow, what a, what a, what a ministry they're building. Wow, what a, what a life they're living. But am I willing to pay that price? James 1 verse 2 to 4 says this, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, if you're facing some sort of trouble in your life, can you say, uh-huh, wow, 13 people, the rest are perfect. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Anyone love this verse? Wow, there's just some spiritual people here. I hate this verse. Like, no one, no one goes like, wow, trouble, amazing, yay. I'm so, yeah, so nice. Right? No, no one does that. But it says here, when troubles of any kind come your way, if you're facing any trouble, listen to this. When troubles of any kind come your way, just move back. Troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I'm still in verse two. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. You know how it's going to be a, a great joy? Remember, it's an opportunity. So it doesn't mean that trouble equals joy. The verse says the, the trouble will be an opportunity for you to turn it into a great joy. So if you're facing any trouble right now, here's how you can turn it into great joy. That very thing that you're facing, it can either cause you to be stressed and to give up on life, or you can use that to rely on God. That very thing that you're facing right now, that trial, that problem, that challenge that you're facing, it can be an opportunity for you to turn up your your Spotify plays and sing Never Lost a Battle. It can be an opportunity for you to declare that my God, He holds all things together. My God is good. My God is my refuge. My God is my shepherd. I shall not want. It can be an opportunity for you to declare that we serve a God whom we can trust and He has never failed us yet. He can consider it an opportunity for great joy, but you have to choose that joy, and you can only do that by relying on God. Are you going to use what you're facing to rely on God, or are you going to use it to just rely on yourself and end up with nothing? Let's keep reading. For for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. That's what every problem is for everything that you're facing, every trial that you're going through. Maybe there's a problem in your marriage. Maybe there's a problem in your family. Maybe there's a problem in your business, in your career. Every trial that you're facing, God's using that to grow your faith. God's using that to grow your your spirit. It's training. Every trouble, it's training for you. Every every problem that you're you're facing right now, it's going to make sense if you will press on. What if I told you today, that that very thing that's frustrating you, that's, that's the thing that God wants to use as fuel in the next season of your life. That problem that you're going through right now, that's God's plan so that he can, so that he can accomplish his purpose for your family. If you're willing to say, I'm going to press on. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect 
and complete, needing nothing. Needing nothing. That's what every trial is for. That's what every trial is for. Uh, last month, we had our Presence Week. Anyone enjoyed Presence Week here? I really loved Presence Week. We encountered God. It was amazing. Anyone here love fasting? Right? Love fasting. Wow, Pastor James, shout out. It's amazing. I love, I love, the, I love the product of fasting. The process, I hate it. Just hate it. And I know now, I, just, I was thinking there in the corner uh, recently, uh, just earlier, and I realized why fasting brings us close to God. Because it's a near-death experience. <laughs> like, there's moments there you're about, like, you're just, you're just, you're just I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm quite dramatic. And so there are moments like, I'm about to die, I'm about to die, I'm about to die. It's the first day of fasting. <laughs> I'm about to die. But, but a, few, a few weeks ago, we, in the presence week, some of the boys, we decided to rent an Airbnb just so that we're not too far from the church and we can be, we're going to serve a bit of energy. And on the, I tried to do, as a, as a Christian, I try and push myself to my limit. And so I tried to do a water fast, right? Water, right? First day, I'm saying I'm dying. I'm dying right now, right? Relax. It's the first day. And on the fourth day, I was really dying. Not an exaggeration. <laughs> I think I was really dying. Jay, you would know. I was really dying, and my head was hurting. My, my stomach was throbbing. And uh, it's good that we were in an Airbnb, because last year, I rented an Airbnb for myself. And on the fourth day, I was thinking to myself, if I die here, <laughs> like, no one even knows which floor I'm in. No one even knows that I rented an Airbnb. No one even knows that I'm here. I'm just going to be dead. Anyways, they saw me. I was dying. They said I'm a bit overdramatic, but that's okay. I was pushing for God. <laughs> so they saw me, and but they're, they're very on. They're quite honoring. And so, but they, I'm not. I'm not gonna throw them under the bus. But they're they were doing a liquid fast, which is quite hard, quite hard too. They're doing a liquid fast, and they were about to buy soup, like mushroom soup, in our condo, that I'm about to smell doing a water fast, right? And so before they bought, we were doing, we're trying to do a prayer, just a prayer, some, some kind of prayer night, <laughs> sell, a, sell a session. I'm, I'm singing. That's my only chance to sing. And so, <laughs> but we're doing a prayer night. They're all like, they're all like, on, we're, we're on our knees. They're like closing their eyes. I'm on, I'm on the sofa. I'm doing this. And <laughs> at some point, Jay started to <laughs> I fell asleep while we were praying. And I said, no, God gave me a dream. Like, he just, he just gave me a dream. I was asleep, and I was pushing. I was dying, man. I was dying. And they, so they went on. They bought soup, and I was, they were they're talking amongst themselves. And they, I think Jay, just very honoring. Mac and Jay, they're talking, and they're just telling, well, Paul's, Paul's going through something, huh? He's quite sacrificing. And he, he's, he's, he's in pain, but I love how he's still pushing. I love how he's still, like, pressing on. I love how he's still wants to pursue God, and you, that's why you see the breakthrough in his life. And as they said that, the phone rang. And it's, it's some the other guy calling. Hello? Hello, Paul said, can you buy him soup? It's two pieces, <laughs> two pieces of liquid soup. Because I was at the end of my limit. <laughs> I was at the end of my limit. But in that, in that, in that four-day water fast I was, on, was trying to do, I was believing in my spirit that God was doing something in me. I want to pay the cost. I want to pay the price. It's not a lot, but I want to pay the price for the purpose that I think God wants for me. I don't know about you, but God is telling you right now. I think there's some people right here that God wants to remind you, hey, you want that dream? Hey, you want that family? Hey, you want that career? Hey, you want that breakthrough? There's a price that you got to pay. There's a price that you got to pay, but our hope is that we're not just Pushing on our own, you, Lord, in Psalm 18, 28, says there, keep my lamp burning. Our God, he sustains us. Our God, he provides. Our God, he will do everything in his power to support you. In Chronicles, he says there that our God is actively looking to support those whose hearts are his. He's not waiting for you to perform. He's actively looking for those who are surrendered to him. He wants to support you, and he will keep your lamp burning. And the Bible even says that he turns our darkness into light. Your purpose is a price. So the question is, 
are we willing to pay for that price? Are we willing to do what it takes so that we could pursue God's purpose for our lives? The verse continues to note in Matthew 5, verse 15. It says this, No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on the lampstand. And I was thinking about that phrase, under a basket. Um, you know, it's a 5.30 service when your voice starts cracking. Thinking about that phrase, right? <laughs> Under a basket. And I was thinking, okay, what, what does that phrase, phrase mean? And so I, asked, I tried to look at the parallel verses. And in Matthew 4, verse 21, it actually, Jesus actually said that, would anyone light a lamp, then put it under a basket or under a bed? Matthew 4, verse 21. Would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? And you know, scholars say that those two things, the basket and the bed, they're representations of what can stop us from walking in God's purpose for our lives. The basket represents our work. If you're studying, it represents your school. If you're, if you're doing something, it represents whatever that you're getting yourself busy with. And the bed represents our comfort. So those are the two things that can stop us from walking in God's purpose for our life. So what do we got to do? We got to make room for God's purpose. That's my fourth point. We got to make room for God's purpose. You see, God works through interruptions. If you, if you read the, the Gospels, most of the miracles that Jesus did was because someone interrupted him. That means that Jesus didn't have a full packed schedule, hour by hour, of what he needs to do. He had, he had some hours in his life, in his, in his day, that were free so that other people can interrupt him. Can you imagine if Jairus went up to Jesus and said, Jesus, can you heal my daughter? And Jesus was like, no. It says in my notion, in my Google Calendar, that I, ha I have a prophetic class and 1 to 2 p.m., so maybe your daughter can wait. Let me just finish my prophetic class right now. No, Jesus was constantly interrupted by people, and that's God, that's how God worked his purpose in him. For you, for us, all we gotta make sure of is that we're open for God to interrupt what we're doing. Because the very thing that will stop us from doing what he has called us to do is the very thing that we're that they're keeping us busy. And just because you're busy, anyone here busy? Um, we're quite busy. But if just because you're busy doesn't mean you're being faithful. Sometimes God needs to interrupt you from your business so that he could really work in your life. And a lot of times, the opportunities, the breakthroughs, the favor of God will come when you allow him to interrupt what you're doing. When you allow him to, 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 to interrupt the very thing that you're keeping yourself busy with. Not allowing God to interrupt you is like rejecting the breakthrough that he wants for you. As Filipinos, we're very polite people. Very polite. Like if you remember when you were kids, when, when your ninong or your nina tries to give you money, what do you say? Wag na po. Right? And your wallet's out there screaming like, take the money! We need the money, right? But we're very polite people. But it's the same thing when we refuse to let God interrupt what we're doing because oftentimes the breakthrough that you need, the inspiration that you need, the joy that you need, the rest that you need, it will come when you allow God to interrupt what you're doing. When you allow God to interrupt you when you're so busy working and when he whispers to you, my son, can you pray for your coworker? My daughter, can you pray? For that person that you don't really like, my, my son, can you do this for your family? A lot of times, the breakthrough comes when we allow God to interrupt what we're doing. And it comes also when we allow ourselves to choose God's purpose over our preference. Our preference is comfortable. You know what's really comfortable? Binge watching and Netflix. Super comfortable, right? There's a new show that I am recently liking. It's called... Uh, Lupin, right? If you watch that, shout out Lupin. It's Lupin, but uh, it's in French, so Lupin. That's, that's how they say it, right? But I can go on for hours and hours and hours of watching that show. I can go on on YouTube if you're, if anyone here watches YouTube, and I can go hours for hours and hours and watch conspiracy theories, 
watch highlights in the NBA, top 10 Nikola Jokic assists and all that kind of stuff. I can go for hours and hours and hours doing that and it's comfortable, but it's not purposeful. It's not doing anything worthy in our life. So we got to make room for God's purpose in our lives. The, f- the second part of that verse says this, of course not, a lamp is not hidden on a basket, a lamp is not hidden under a bed, a lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. That's where God puts a lamp on. Wherever you are right now, whatever family your God has placed you in, whatever job or business God has entrusted to you, whatever kind of friends God has put you in a circle, um, in, God has a purpose for you right where you are. You're positioned for purpose. It's my fifth point. You're positioned for purpose. A lot of times we compare ourselves with other people, right? Anyone here compare themselves to other people? Yeah, right? And we, 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 we often say this, like once, I, if I'm that rich, then I'm really gonna start blessing people. If I get promoted, then I'm really gonna treat these people well. If I get more time, then I'm gonna start serving in the church, which there's no pressure to serve. A lot of times we use the, the lifestyle of the people that we compare ourselves with as excuse, as an excuse to not walk in God's purpose for our lives. But wherever God has placed you in, He has a purpose for you, right where you are. You might not like the work that God has entrusted to you. You might not like the, the, the friends that you have right now, which if you don't like them, just join a connect group and it will be fine. But you might not like the very thing that God has entrusted to you, but right where you are, if you're doing something honorable, God has positioned you there for a purpose. Ephesians 2 verse 10, for we are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Long ago, God has already prepared the way for you. Before you ever step in that workplace, before you ever step in that business, before you ever step in that marriage, God has planned a good work for you there. And He has a purpose for you right where you are. You just got to choose to press on. You just got to choose to serve. You just got to choose what God wants you to do and not what you just want to do. You're positioned for purpose right where you are. But it's tough. It's not easy. Like a lot of times we, we start comparing. We, we, start, we start looking at other people. I, I, I go through that. I still go through that sometimes. You look at other people. I remember years ago, I would look at my other friends who were doing amazing in their ministry. I was, I was delayed in college years ago. I was delayed in college, and my press release was, God called me to something else, right? And so I spent six years in, my coll- in college because I, I was saying that I really love studying, and so I want to prolong it a little bit longer. And my press release was, God has called me to something else, but the real thing was I was failing <laughs> this, this course, this other course, right? And then I started looking, I started comparing myself to my friends at that time who were doing amazing with what God has called them to do, already graduated college, started their families, doing big things. And I remember that moment, God reminded me, hey, right where you are, there's purpose. You may feel like you're delayed, but God's just developing you. You might feel like, God's not showing up, but he's stirring something up right where you are. He has a purpose for you right where you are. When I graduated, I, um, so one of the few jobs that I, that I had, I was struggling four jobs at a time. It was really tough. But one of the jobs that I applied for was I wanted to be a speech instructor in a university. And uh, I don't want to talk myself up, but they said that I'm the most good-looking teacher in that university. And people started talking, started getting famous, right? No, joke lang. But I started teaching at that university, which I'm not going to name names because uh, just for reasons. <laughs> and then I started teaching. And I'm not, I'm not the Christian, Christian spiritual teacher where I would break down verses in the beginning of the class and say, come on, let's study this as speech. You know, Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans, no, no, I didn't do that. But I just, I started, I just lived my life. I, just, um, I was just there for, there for them. But at the end of that class, I decided that 
God can do something. I realized that God can do something in that class. And maybe he can do something in, in that same class that's not a Christian class, but he can use my life to be, a, to be worth something. And so I gave them, the speech students, an optional assignment, right? At that time, we were in the Shangri-La, and I gave them an optional assignment. I said, class, as a final optional assignment, here's what I want you to do. On Sunday, we're going to go to an event, right? I'm not saying what it is. I'm saying it's an event. We're going to go to an event, and there's going to be some music in that event. And I want you to just start jumping around. It's going to be some EDM-ish type of music. So just start jumping around, just start jumping around, and then the music's going to die down. And as soon as the music dies down on this event as an optional assignment, what I want you to do is start lifting your hands up just like this and start singing. Start singing. And I'm going to give you a bonus plus three if you would start uttering some syllables out there. Right, start singing and start uttering some syllables right there. And then after that, what is going to happen is uh, someone's going to give a speech, right? Someone's going to give a speech. And as speech students, I want you to start observing and start taking down notes of the things that are speaking to you. And the next step to that assignment is start taking down notes of how you can apply that to your life in a practical setting. And then you can pass the paper to me. But if you want a plus 10 bonus, at the end of the talk, when you hear the words, if you want to accept, start raising your hand right there. When you hear the words, if you want to accept, and then that day, and that day we had 100 salvations. Now, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell them that. I said, okay, if you, want, if you want, you can come to church and we can study how the pastor speaks because he, he's amazing. He's anointed. What's anointed, sir? No, just, just come, just come. <laughs> just come. So they came, and that very day, I think around 40 of them accepted the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. <laughs> and, and that's not because I was a great teacher. I think I was a horrible teacher. I was a teacher whom um, they would get high grades, but they wouldn't really learn anything because all we're doing were activities. But that's just a testament of someone who was willing to say, God, use me right where I am. And wherever you are right now, God wants to use you. There's someone here right now that your influence will affect a whole school. I, I saw that picture when I was sitting on the back earlier in worship. There's someone here right now that God wants to use you to affect a whole school community. If you would just be willing to say, God, use me right where I am. He wants to use you. If you're the only Christian in your family, God wants to use you. If you're the only Christian in that group of your friends, which you maybe need to start hanging out less with, but if you're the only Christian there, God wants to use you right where you are. He won't place you anywhere by accident. He has a purpose for you anywhere He placed you. Your, your position for purpose. So stop comparing. Stop looking to the right or to the left with what other people are doing. Because in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 17 to 18, it says this, if the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part in the body just as you want it to be. Wherever you are, you can press on and choose God's purpose for your life. Whatever team you're in, if you're serving, God has a purpose for you there. There are people, there are families even, that 10 years from now, they will thank you for your service. There are generations, decades after your serving, that will thank you because you chose to sacrifice, that will thank you because you chose to serve God even when you didn't feel like it. Because you chose to say, God, use me right where I am. And if you're not serving, can I challenge you? that there's no pressure in our house to serve, but God has given you gifts so that you can build the church. How that's gonna happen, I don't know. But you can only realize the purpose of your talent. You can only realize the purpose of your gift. You can only realize the purpose of the skill that God has entrusted to you if you start serving in His house. You're positioned for His purpose. It's not an accident that you're here in favorite church. 
I feel like there's some people here tonight that maybe you've been serving or maybe you've been attending and you feel like the church is uh, quite doing well and I don't think they need me. Oh, we need you. We need you. You're positioned for purpose in this house. And I love what Pastor James said earlier. If you get under the covering of the house, and by the way, the covering of the house is not the covering of Crown Plaza. The covering of the house is you getting involved. The covering of the house is you getting in a connect group. The covering of the house is you saying, God, use me right where you placed me to be. That's the covering of the house. You're positioned for purpose. Last verse, that's this, Matthew 5, verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Your light, it's not meant for you. It's meant for other people. Your purpose, it's not meant for yourself. It's not meant to build your brand. It's not meant to build yourself. It's not meant to build your bank account. Your purpose, it's for somebody else. Your light, it's not for you. It's for someone around you. They need your light. They need your light. And that's why when you point light at your face, you don't really like it, right? You start seeing details that you don't really like. Because your light is not for you. It's for someone else around you. And the verse says that when you shine your light, when you let your light shine and you let others see your good works, they'll give glory not to you, but they'll give glory to our, our Father. And I, know, I don't know about you, but I, wanna, I want God to use my broken life for His glory. I want, I, want, I want Him to use what I can offer so that people can see His goodness. But it will take a fight. It's not easy. It will take a fight. It's not easy to, to choose what He says when everything in the world is trying to define you. It's not easy to stay connected when everything around you is saying that you, just, you, just, you, just, you should just give up. It's not easy to pay the price for the cost and the cost of your purpose. It's not easy to, to make room for God's purpose. It's not easy to embrace where God has placed you to be. It's not easy. You got to put up a fight. You got to put up a fight and say, God, I'm willing to press on. But let me tell you this. Your fight, it's my last point. Your fight, it will be someone else's fight. The fight that you're willing to put. If you're going to be willing to say, God, I'm choosing to press on. God, I'm choosing to, to listen to what you say. God, I'm going to choose to serve. Even if I'm at my limit, I'm going to choose to sacrifice for you. Even if nothing's going right in my life, I'm going to choose you, God, because I know that my fight, it can be someone else's life. There's someone here struggling right now, and your fight, it will be the fuel of another person. There's someone else going through a, a major a major thing in your business right now, but your fight, it will feed families. Your fight will provide for people. If you're willing to say, God, I want to hold on. I want to trust you, Lord. I want to put my hope in you, Jesus, so that other people may see the light of the world, so that other people may see the goodness of my God. If you're here and you're going to say, I'm willing to fight so that my God, my God, He can shine His light on the people around me. He will show up. He's still moving. He's still doing something. You may not feel like it, but our God still lives. Our God's still resurrecting something. Our God is the God of the resurrection. There are dead dreams that He's going to resurrect tonight. There are visions and purposes and callings that's God, that God's going to raise up right tonight. Let me sing it later. Because your fight will be someone else's life. Years ago, I told my story of how when I was a bit younger, we lost our dad to suicide. Depression wasn't a major thing before. He basically outsmarted the psychiatrist and took his own life. And I remember going through a season, years, I think over a decade of just struggling with regret, struggling with self-loading, self-blaming, that if I was a better son, if I was a better basketball player, if I was a, uh, a better student, maybe, maybe he would still be alive. And then one day, going home, I rode the jeepney that my dad used to drive. And I thought I was healed. I was a Christian at that time. I was a leader, and I, I thought I was strong. And, but the memories just started rushing in. 
of how he dropped me off in that place, how he gave me a, a top that he, he carved himself in that, in that day, of how he showed me a ping pong racket that he himself built in that same jeepney. And the memory start, started rushing in, and I, and I got down in that jeepney, bawling my eyes out. People were wondering, what's happening? I got out of the jeepney, I sat in the gutter near our house and just cried and cried and asked God, God, why? Of all the good people in the world, why well, you got to take him? It feels so unfair, God. It feels so unfair. But at the moment, as I was praying to God, that's a prayer, by the way. Sometimes we think prayers are like, that. God, can you do this for me? That's a prayer. When you're being authentic to God, that's you praying to God. In that moment, as I was praying to God, the presence of God showed up. And I felt like God was hugging me in that moment and saying, I'm here. My son, I'm here. I'm with you and I'm grieving with you. I'm, you're sad, that's all right. You're allowed to feel that. But your pain, my son, your pain, I want to use it for my purpose. I want to use it for my purpose. And it was a beautiful moment. I thought, wow, great, amazing. I've got a purpose. And I didn't realize that there was a fight that was about to come. But what I just realized just recently, that for me to have that moment, for me to walk in my purpose, for me to be here standing on this stage and preaching the Word of God to you, I'm no prodigy. I don't have a huge like spiritual inheritance. But I'm here standing and I'm here trying to walk in my purpose. And I'm here encountering God in my daily life because someone else chose to fight. I lost a dad, but my mom, he, he lost a partner. And I just realized this recently, that for years and year and year after year after year, my mom chose to fight. We were Christians when we lost our dad. We're going to church, we're constantly going to church, and the very first thing that my mom chose to do when we lost her dad was that he, she went to the counselor. She went to the pastor at that time and said, how, how can my kids recover? That's what she chose to do. And I was, we were talking about this um, just recently. And she said, why are you asking this? Like, this is dramatic. This is like MMK, she said. And then we started crying, just shared a beautiful moment with her. And I said, Mom, stop crying or maybe move away from the pan because the fried rice, it's going to get salty, right? But she was telling me the story of how she, she actually did that. And she was not bragging. She's just saying what happened. She's saying, I asked, what, 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 can, what, how can, what can we do? What can I do so that you guys can recover? Because I had, I had, she said, because I had a conviction that I needed to fight. I lost someone dear to me and it was sad, it was horrible. Every time she would hear a jeepney, she told me that she would just start crying, but we never saw her sad. She was always strong. She, would, she always held herself up. Every single day, she would switch that light on and she would press on. She would serve us, she would act strong. She was quite strong, but every single day, she would, every single day she would believe, she would pray for us. And every single Sunday, she would drag us to church when we didn't even feel like it. In a moment where she could have easily just turned away from God and said, I'm done. Why do I have to believe this? I lost someone dear to me. She chose to believe. She chose to trust. She chose to put her hope on our God who's our Redeemer, on our God who's our Rescuer, on our God who will work all things together for the good of those who love Him. He chose to put up a fight. And because he cho she chose to put up a fight, I saw the light of the world. What if I told you today, tonight, that because of your fight, someone might just get to know God? Because, because, of, because you're going to push through, because you're not going to give up with that very thing that you're struggling with right now. Because you're going to press on, because you're going to still keep believing, because you're going to still keep on praying, because you're going to hope in God and continue to do what He has called you to do. Your fight, it will be someone else's life. There will be families in the future that will thank you because you chose to believe God. There will be generations in the future that you won't even know about, they, but they will praise God because of the sacrifice that you're going to make. They will choose to praise God because you chose to hold on to Him. They will choose to know the light of the world because you chose 
to put up a fight. Your fight, it will be someone else's life. It will be someone else's life because the reality is as much as we're having fun and we're encountering the presence of God every single Sunday, the world actually looks quite dark. You still have friends who are lost. You still have friends who are frustrated. You still have friends who are running out. You still have friends who don't know God and they think they think that they're having fun and you know, you know because you've been there, you know they're not having fun. There's still family members of yours that still don't know God that are still going to an eternity of being separated from Him. But you have the power to fight. The Holy Spirit is in you and you can choose to be their light. You can choose to put up a fight and say, God, I'm going to press on. God, I'm going to believe. Because I know you're still moving. Because see, I know God, you, my Lord, you're my light and my salvation. Whatever I'm going through, whom should I fear, God? The Lord God, you are my stronghold. You're the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? We can choose to fight because our God, He is our life. We can choose to fight because our God is still moving. Our God, He's still faithful. Our God is still strong. Our God is still greater than the thing that you're facing. Our God, He's still better than every single thing that you're going to face. Our God is still doing something. His record is clean. He has never failed us yet. And if He did it before for other people, He can do it for your life. You can choose to fight because we have a God whom 2,000 years ago already fought the fight of life so that we can choose His life. Now the question is, are you willing to walk in God's purpose for your life? Can you stand all over, all over this place? Can we stand? And if you're here and something spoke to you and you know in your mind and you know in your heart that you maybe aren't fully walking in God's purpose for your life. Maybe you're a bit distracted. Maybe you're a bit down and that's all right. Maybe you're a bit drained. But God's purpose for your life, it's both taxing and fulfilling. When you choose to walk in your purpose, it's going to be tiring sometimes, but I promise you this, it's going to be the most fulfilling thing that you'll ever do. So if you're here, as a way to respond to God, I actually want you to take out your phone right now. If you want to respond to God, if you want to say, God, I want to press on, I want you to take out your phone and press that flashlight button just as a prophetic declaration that God, I choose to be the light. God, I choose to be the light right where I am. If you're here and you want to say, God, I'm going to respond to your purpose. God, I'm going to respond and I'm willing to say that wherever you place me, I'm choosing. I'm choosing to fight. I'm choosing to fight all over this place. If that's you, can you lift your hands to him? God, I thank you. That's quite amazing. I just, I just have a picture of our nation. Of our nation looking at the light of our church saying like in hunger I see people like hungering God I want that light people saying God I want what they have and that's not gonna start when our church explodes that's gonna start with you when you choose to be the light right where you are with all hands lifted up God I pray for every single person God with their hands lifted up I declare your purpose to come I declare your vision to come. I declare right now, dead, dead, dead dreams come to life, God. Those without hope, give them hope right now. Those without a vision for their life, give them vision, God. Those who are feeling left out and feeling great, God, I pray that you restore them in the name of Jesus. Come on. If you want breakthrough, if you want to walk in your purpose, start singing this song. Start singing, come alive. Start singing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come on, keep your hands lifted up. Lift it up in the name of Jesus. We pray every day to the feet of Jesus. Every day.
God, I thank you that right now you're resurrecting dreams. You can look at your phone right now and right now you can press that off button on that flashlight. But now you're not turning off the light. What I want us to declare with this physical action is I want us to claim that this phone, it's not going to be a distraction for our purpose. If you can turn off that flashlight right now, declaring that God would turn off every bit of distraction, everything that's weighing us down, everything that's weighing you down from your purpose. And let's stay in this atmosphere of worship just a little bit longer. We're going to declare this bridge over our lives. And I believe that God's about to reveal callings in this place. If you're here and you need clarity in your life, can you lift your hands to heaven like this as if you're about to receive? If you're here and you need vision in your life, can you start singing your own song? Can you start speaking in tongues if you're here? Because I believe that as we fix our eyes on Jesus, He's going to reveal things to you. He's going to reveal His purpose for you. He's going to reveal a vision of what He wants you to do for your life. Right now, can you speak in tongues? Can you speak and start singing your own song? God, every person right here, God, who needs your vision, God, I believe, I believe that you're still moving, God. Come on, declare it in your life. I still believe. into God and not giving up and even just being the light of the world and how Jesus he, he's a light he lights up the darkness but maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus so many times 
we think that coming to church equals a relationship with Jesus, but it doesn't. A relationship with Jesus is a result of us coming to God at some point in our lives, recognizing the sin that stands between us and God and humbly coming before Him and asking Him to forgive us of our sins. Not just that, but it's identifying and declaring that Jesus is the only Son of God. That He lived a sinless, perfect life. He died on the cross, but He defeated death, defeated darkness, and rose victorious. And He made a way so that you and I could access God. Maybe you're here tonight, you've never made that choice. You're watching, you've never made that decision to accept what Jesus has done. Maybe you did this and, and you did it many years ago, not many weeks ago, many years ago, but you walked away from God. Before we end this meeting, I wanna give you a chance to respond. Could you just bow your heads, close your eyes if you're in the room? If you're watching online, I want you to respond to me. If that's you, I'm gonna to count to three. You're saying, James, I'm that first person, I've never done this. Or maybe, James, I'm that second person, I did this a long time ago, but I walked away from God. If that's you, when I get to three, I want you to lift your hand nice and high, because I want to pray for you right where you are tonight. One, two, three. Come on, lift your hands all over this place. Awesome. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for your hand. Anybody else would say yes to Jesus? Here as well, again, thank you. Thank you, Lord. A couple here in the front as well, thank you. If you're online, I want you to respond. Just lift up your hand in your bedroom whenever you're watching this. We're gonna pray a prayer in Romans chapter 10 in the Bible. The Apostle Paul says that if you repent with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so I wanna lead us in a prayer that, that reflects that scripture. If you lifted your hands, I want you to put your hand on your heart right now. If you lifted your hand, we're all gonna pray this prayer together. And if you're online, you're watching, and you want to pray this prayer with us, come on, join with us. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come to you right now, and I ask you to forgive my sin. I believe that you died on the cross, but you defeated the, de the grave. You defeated death, and you rose victorious for me. So right now I ask, Please come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can we give God praise for every person that just lifted their hands? It's amazing. You know, if you lifted your hand and prayed that prayer, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. And uh, we'd love to reach out to you. If you're in the building, some of our team may come up and just say hi and, and introduce themselves and just pray with you. Uh, if no one does that, please come and see us at the VIP section, or you can text the number that's on the screen. If you're within the Philippines, you can text the number on the screen. Uh, if you're outside, you can just follow the links, because the, the Christian walk's not meant to be done alone. We want to connect with you, really help you in your journey, what it means to be a Christ follower. So please let us know whether in here or online. We'd love to connect with you. Hey, can we honor Paul? What a great message that was. Great work. It's just wonderful. And uh, hey, if you're not in a connect group, let me encourage you, get in a connect group. Because life happens, and there's nothing like being surrounded by people that love you, that want to walk with you, that will buy you soup when you're fasting. Uh, get in a connect group. You can find that info at the back for that. If you're online watching, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I'm going to throw you over to the favorhood. Have a great week in Jesus' name.